I want to talk about the word worship because I think for a lot of us the word worship has been defined by musicians. <laughs> When we hear the word worship, what we usually think is a corporate singing event or a bunch of people gathered at a religious ceremony and singing songs together. And that's not necessarily wrong, I just think that it's limiting. It's limiting because of what it brings to mind. So if you were to do a Google search on worship and check out the images, here's what you would get. A lot of people gathering, hands in the air, hands in the air with light, hands in the air outside, hands in the air with some people outside. Pretty much it's just a lot of hands up in the air or you're pretending to fly out in a field by yourself. I just don't know when else in my life I actually am supposed to make that pose. I mean, when does that pose come into play in other aspects of your life? Maybe you use this pose while stretching. Or maybe you're lost in the woods and you're trying to signal a plane. Or I know, you're at a baseball game and you order two bags of peanuts and they throw them at you at the same time. Whether or not you use this pose in your life, the visual image is limiting. It's like if you were to take the word breathing and it was only used in the context of scuba diving, where breathing is really, really important. And so you go scuba diving with a group, and the whole time the group speaks about breathing, it's in the context of being underwater. That was such a great breathing experience. Yeah, I was breathing so hard. Let's go and breathe together this afternoon. None of how that is used is wrong. In fact, it's right on. It's just a small part of what breathing actually is. Because there are some of us, including myself, who find ourselves in these corporate worship gatherings the last thing we feel like doing is singing because it just feels antithetical to what we're experiencing in our lives. And it doesn't mean that we necessarily don't want to worship as much as the way in which to worship we've been given in this moment is the only way and we don't know how to participate. So we feel conflicted with not participating and we feel like this area of our lives is underdeveloped. And that's not true. It's just that you are being asked to scuba dive when you were already breathing. So let's look in the Bible, which is a good place to start in defining these terms. If you were to look at the first place that this word worship happens in the Bible, and look, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but the first time it happens in English, would you find it in Genesis 1? No. Would you find it in Genesis 2? No. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? No. You would find it all the way in Genesis 22, the first time it happens, and it happens like this. Abraham is taking Isaac up on the mountain to sacrifice him, and he says to his servants, stay here with the donkeys. Isaac and I are going up to worship the Lord. So the first time that this word happens is in a moment of obedience and sacrifice. It's just two chapters later that the second time it happens, and it's a really long story, but it involves finding Isaac a wife. Abraham's servant has gone to the land they came from to find a wife. It all happens the way he hoped for, and he falls down and he worships the Lord. So the second time that the word worship happens is thanksgiving and praise. So you have obedience and sacrifice, and you have thanksgiving and praise. Maybe a helpful way to think about worship is responding. Because there's these moments when we gather together and we respond in loud proclamation. And then there's these other times that we can respond in silent solitude. Worship has always been about responding to God where you find yourself. Because when you respond to something, you open up yourself to its transforming power. To respond is to be open and to be transformed, no matter what it is you worship. The Apostle Paul writes in his letter to the Romans, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Your worship to God is to offer yourself up to the transforming work of Him in your life. Well, instead of the arms wide open on a mountaintop practicing to fly all by yourself at sunset pose, Maybe I can offer you something better, and that is flowers and bees. Okay, this might get a little nerdy, but recent scientific discovery shows that bees and flowers participate in a mutually beneficial electromagnetism. Basically, plants emit a weak negative charge, and bees in flight emit a positive electrical charge. Bees can actually sense the quote-unquote come-hither 
electrical vibes that flowering plants exude, meaning they can sense in flowers which ones contain the most nectar and pollen. So in this metaphor, I want you to imagine that your worship is the flower. And the way God wants to interact with you is represented by the bees. Your worship is the electrical charge opening up a way for participation. Your worship is opening up a way for an interaction. And when you're responding, then you're open and ready to embrace the transforming power of the divine. And that transforming power can come when we respond together in singing. Yes, it can, but it can also come in loving a friend over a plate of nachos. When we're responding to the divine and witnessing the beauty of his creation as we're on a hike. Or it can even come in our most sorrowful times, like when we're sitting with a loved one who just told us that they have cancer and they have a long road ahead. The opportunity to respond to God is infinite. Worship is infinite. And we do ourselves an injustice not watching how we define these words because in our specific cultural definitions, we can lose the bigger picture. We are invited to worship with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. We are invited to worship with our whole lives. So may you be freed from the image of the lone person, arms raised in a field somewhere. And may you be implanted with the image of an open and a flourishing heart. Thank you.